What is up, guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Once again, we are back for the My Team Journey, episode number 11 for the British Grand Prix in Silverstone. For many F1 teams, this is the home race. I suppose you could throw us under that bus as well. Welcome to another episode, guys. Today, we are trying to continue our streak of, I think, like four podiums in a row or four podiums and four races. It's been a very successful spell as of late. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, see all those videos, and, uh, well, check them out if you haven't seen them already. We started off, supposedly, as a back market team, and um, right from word go, I feel like we've been really more of a midfielder, upper midfielder, sometimes maybe even a top contender when things go our way. Either way, uh, we're looking to somehow continue our trend of, of being somewhere inside the top five. Uh, that's going to be the aim for today. Uh, and also, this could potentially be my teammate's final race uh, in Formula One at this team. We, we potentially have a contract renewal coming up after the end of this episode. So from next episode onwards, we will have a new teammate. Just be prepared for that. Anyway, speaking of our teammates, we're going to boost his driver acclaim. And uh, hopefully that'll, in turn, boost the overall team uh, acclaim. If you have a driver with better driver acclaim, I think that kind of indirectly affects the team acclaim. I'm pretty sure. I really should know uh, after all these years of doing my team. But there we go. Uh, Upgrade-wise, uh, there's nothing really to do today because we did them all uh, at the midway point of last episode. Unfortunately, major weight reduction upgrade has failed and we don't have the resource points to do that in time for the Hungarian Grand Prix. So that's something we'll do uh, maybe after we get some resource points in. But we'll have to wait and see. Weight reduction failed and a durability upgrade failed. Meaning we don't really bring much heading into the British Grand Prix. Uh, as you can see on the performance index here, we have Red Bull moving forward once again. Aston and Ferrari carrying good momentum. Mercedes have finally developed after Monaco. And uh, big gains there for Williams and Alpha Tauri, I'd say. They're really closing up to this midfield fight. So... Really, I actually feel like we're closer to last place than what we are to first place now. But even still, that gap between first and last isn't that much, to be honest. It's uh, less than 100 points, performance points, that is. So uh, don't be surprised to see the whole field separated by less than a second and a half. Uh, maybe even less, given it's the British Grand Prix. But uh, yeah, it means... If you have a bad day, you're going to have a bad day. But if you're having a good day, it could be an incredible day. So that's what we want to see. Uh, modern F1 cars all being fairly close together. Now, engine wear isn't great. Um, it is the elephant in the room. It's been our durability, uh, our longevity of parts, particularly on the engine side, is, is not good. Uh, we're really going to start feeling that in about three races time. We're going to have to take some penalties. And we're going to have to take penalties at non-sprint race circuits. So let's get into qualifying. We've got our resource points. Time for the sessions that matter. Hopefully, we're on the money. All right, then, here we are for the British Grand Prix. In the past, this has been a circuit which has been really OP for the AI. Um, and I'm not too sure if that's going to correlate with this game because, in general, we can carry a lot of speed through high-speed corners on F123. But at the same time, I feel like the AI are stronger than me through high-speed corners because of the nature of our car. Heading through the old Turn 1. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're in a bit of trouble. I have realized immediately that I think this car is lacking a lot of downforce. Now, that was... Those cracks were starting to emerge in Austria, where we were quite slow through the high-speed corners in the middle sector. That's where the AI were pulling a lot of time on me. But it appears quite obvious here that, uh, yeah, we're not, be we're not able to carry the speed like we want to. For example, in, uh, you know, time trial or multiplayer, the old turn one of Silverstone is completely flat, but not in this car. We've got to do a big lift and a downshift to get through the old turn one. 
So maybe that's a bit of a, an omission from me. I, I probably needed to run more downforce than what we're currently running at the moment. I think the, the downforce level is 25, 20, something around that region, uh, which is kind of, it's, it's, it's bang on in the mid range, but I, I think we needed to run moderately high downforce just to be able to run comfortably through some of these high speed corners. Hopefully in the race, that can be less of an issue because downforce, I think, matters more in qualifying and extracting that amount of performance. In breaking news, uh, Liam Lawson made it out of Q1 for the first time in his career at Marduk Motorsport. But unfortunately for him, it's too little too late. This is his last race. And uh, I, now we'll see what he can do now that he's got an extra run to uh, compare against me. Uh, but, but so far this season, it has been... I don't even think it's been 11-0. I think he yeah, out-qualified me in the first race. But apart from that, it's uh, it's been 10-1 to, uh, to myself in the qualifying performance. So uh, Liam's not had a good time of things. But, you know, this is, this is his chance to impress other teams and maybe get a drive elsewhere. We do have mid-season uh, or just driver transfers on. So there's every chance he could pick up a drive somewhere else if they're looking for someone on the cheap. There are a few drivers in this field who have been underperforming somewhat so there could be some changes in coming anyway this is the end of q2 this is our final run here we're up by six tenths oh wow make that eight tenths we lost a lot of time in our previous lap across the line and it's only p11 on the grid for this british grand prix eight tenths away uh is is uh, relatively slower than where we have been in previous rounds in austria for example we were two to three tenths off pole today it is eight tenths. The pace has not been there. And uh, I, I, I said it right at the top of the, the qualifying session that I think we made a, a, a setup blunder. I, I think we needed to run more downforce. But we're locked in with that now. I even upped the, the front wing up by one. So um, that, you know, helped a little bit. But it's not going to it's not gonna cover up the, the glaring issue that we have with this car. And, and that is that our downforce department our downforce upgrades i just know we're near the level of other teams around us so that is something we'll need to fix in the immediate future either way we will start p10 for the british grand prix it's going to be a tough one today uh trying to fight our way through the field but uh you know we've had some pretty crazy results i think we were due a bit of a humbling lesson today either way my teammates more on pace with me which is good but let's go to the race Welcome everyone as you join us at a former Second World War aircraft base, now converted into one of the great motor racing tracks. Britain is one of only two countries to have held a Grand Prix in every year of the Formula One World Championship and long may that continue. This is Silverstone and this is the British Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Here we go then, the home of Formula One. We are ready for the British Grand Prix. P10 on the grid, not too far away from the race leaders, given our, I'd, I'd say, lack of pace. I, I think that's a pretty good result. P10 is uh, certainly not the worst place to be starting from today. Uh, one stop is definitely on the cards. It always was and I think always will be on this game. It's such a long transition time through the pit lane that a two stop will never work here unless there's safety cars so um we're, we're not going to throw anything crazy at this race especially given that we don't have the pace to uh to make up the difference to catch up so we're gonna start i think on the soft compound tires and um the undercut seems to be the meta on this game so if i can stay close to the leaders um get dragged along with drs then then that'll be great um and then yeah if i can get an undercut on a few of those guys then then we could maybe bag like a uh, a P6 or a P7. I really do think the top four cars are probably too quick for us in this race. But never say never. There are, there are many times that I've written myself off 
and I've then gone on to, to prove myself wrong. So uh, absolutely anything is is on the table, especially with sim damage uh, <laughs> and all the crazy shenanigans that comes with F123. So uh, we'll be optimistic and we'll make sure that we uh, pick up a few places off the start. The starts have actually been really good for us there. So uh, a lot of opportunity for us to capitalize early. And uh, who knows, if we can contain some drivers, then we could be on for a big result. The formation lap gets underway then, and it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions could affect the lifespan of the tyres. We're almost ready to start the race as the cars take their positions on the grid, with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. And there is the possible race strategies. Uh, not too many people starting on the soft, the majority opting for the mediums. And uh, that's our big window of opportunity, getting that undercut in, pumping in those fastest laps as early as we can, and uh, just holding on to every opportunity that we get. Thankfully, we are quick in a straight line. We do have that amazing engine, and we are running low downforce, so it might be tough for the AI to overtake us. We just don't know yet. Five red lights, and we are underway for the British Grand Prix. Good start to those uh, relative around us. Uh, two spots gained already. Make that three as we displace Alonso and the knocking on the door of the top five. The two Mercs up next, and these guys are challenging for the drivers and the constructors. We get them too, and we're into P5 in this British Grand Prix. Only the two big teams left ahead of us. Mercedes in the muds. It is Ferrari versus Red Bull. The top four trying to run away with this Grand Prix. And uh, I guess I'll be hoping for their sake that I'll be the cork in the bottle, holding back Mercedes and literally everyone else in this field. But we're going to try and strike as early as we can with these soft compound tires, make, a, make an indent into these race leaders, just be really annoying and uh, get, get maybe one or two more drivers in this field if we can. It is going to be absolutely paramount that we keep within one second of the race leaders. It is proving to be difficult already as the race is settling in. Wow, look at that understeer moments heading through uh, the yeses. You can see how much time I'm losing. I'm very much under pressure from Lewis Hamilton. And it looks like right, the, the previous the uh, whoa, bit of a wobble moment through uh, Club and Veil vale there. You can tell, you can really tell I'm lacking downforce and maybe even a little bit of confidence today. Uh, whereas the last four or five races, the confidence has been sky high. But not today, unfortunately. We need more downforce. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really costing us. But uh, yeah, I'm doing the best job I can to, to try and stay close. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're doing okay. We're, we're in this fight. Perez, Sainz fighting away, which is enabling us to stay with. But even on power there, when the tires are fairly fresh, we are, we're losing the back end already. That, that speaks volumes for how this race is going to go later once the tyres actually start to drop off a little bit. Hamilton is so close behind me. Now DRS is enabled, and uh, we're going to see the true test of what the AI can do relative to us. I think Lance Stroll has retired from the Grand Prix. Don't quote me on that. It is certainly an Aston Martin. But we fend off Lewis Hamilton running side by side there. The lack of pace is uh, on full show now as the leaders are just gone. Two seconds up the road. There's no chance of us catching him now unless we can uh, start to work with the Mercedes here to, to catch up to them, but I'm not even sure they have the pace, but we'll okay, fight away for every position for all it's worth because, uh, well, I'd love to finish in the top five in this race. How realistic that is, I guess we'll wait and see, but we'll uh, we'll put up a big fight. We won't, we won't give up. There is still the potential for undercut to get into that realm of the AI ahead. So, um, you know, anything's possible, but we, we, we do first and foremost want to guarantee as many points as we can, because we're about to hit that logjam of uh, not being able to upgrade past uh, spec level one in uh, some of our facility upgrades. Side by side with the other Merc now, and uh, you can see there's a, there's a big old train looking to get me uh, just behind. Stroll is uh, is the next car behind, so it was Alonso who retired from the race. There goes Stroll up the inside of Hamilton. Piastri looking for a move up the inside of me, and doesn't quite make the move stick. Still side by side with uh, Merc A and Merc B team. I'll let you guys decide which one is uh, which <laughs> at this stage. But uh, yeah, good little battle emerging between the AI. We love to see uh, the AI actually forcing moves and, and having good scraps. Certainly the, oh wow, the increased slipstream and DRS potential has, uh, has made things a lot more spicy in uh, the raw gameplay. 
of F123. And uh, I'm absolutely here for it. Big old squeeze on uh, Lando Norris, it was in the end. So there was an internal switch there between the McLarens. And now Piastri is back ahead again. He's on the top compound tires, so same strategy as me. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a key fight for us to the end of the Grand Prix. Unfortunately, we've lost DRS to Stroll and Hamilton. Hamilton, in particular, is gone and is setting off after the Red Bulls and the Ferraris. But now we're really starting to get into that painful zone of the tire wear uh, above 40%. And uh, I, I think we need to come in for that undercut desperately to get back in the fight with Stroll, maybe even Hamilton. I think the top four cars are gone now at this point. I mean, the, the undercut is strong, but I don't know if it's that strong. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see, but we're, we're keeping back the McLarens at this stage. Norris is again back ahead of his teammate. I've had a massive spin in front of everyone. I've got major front wing damage, floor damage, and the red flag has been brought out in this British Grand Prix. Maybe a little bit premature there, but uh, the red flag has been brought out nonetheless. Track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. And that could be curtains in this race. As if our pace wasn't bad enough, we now have major floor damage. It's a good chance to change our strategy for the rest of the Grand Prix if we want to. And I guess we get a free pit stop out of this, but so does literally everyone. Uh, no one has made a pit stop yet. But uh, now this kind of forces our hand. Do we go mediums or do we go hards? I'm probably... Well, I'm open to both at the moment, but I, I'm thinking probably hards, given how much we were suffering for, for pace. I don't really want to be on mediums and then completely fall off the cliff. Uh, you can see that drop off in the last, like, two laps of the medium. So I think, I think we'll go hards and uh, see how they go. Also, the hards are going to be a little bit more resilient to... Uh, overheating and, and as such look after the tires and we'll be able to push on them a little bit harder so I think a harder compounds I think will probably suit us but uh, we'll wait and see it uh, looks like the hard is probably slower but if we can maintain track position then that's all that's really going to matter a lot of other people going hard as well with the exception of Pierre Gasly away we go for the restart of the British Grand Prix another chance another opportunity for us to move forward as we go around the outside of Lance Stroll and one of the McLarens heading into turn one now we head into turn three uh, try and get around the outside of these guys we'll have the inside for the next left-hander maybe we can sneak up the inside of Hamilton who was previously you know home and dry uh, prior to the red flag but now we're in the mix once again Hulkenberg Getting very big for his boots there, trying to overtake the seven-time world champion. We're going to go up into overtake, have a little look up the inside. We also need to suss out this floor damage because uh, the car is not going to feel the same as what it did before. And to be honest, how it felt before wasn't great. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have even less downforce and, and that's just going to make life very, very tricky. Uh, particularly when we're trying to, to throw the, this car through these high-speed corners and have trust that it's going to stick. This section of the track as well is going to be pretty sketchy. Even the run-up to the line, as we get on full power here, you know, there's a bit of side, there's a bit of lateral... Yeah, there it is. There it is. There's a bit of lateral load on the car, on the rear tyres, as you load up through that last corner. And uh, as predicted, it's quite sketchy. It is already sketchy on new tyres. So this now, guys is uh, a rescue mission, a rescue mission of points, uh, damage limitation. We're currently holding out eighth place and four points at this stage, which would be an incredible result at this stage. But I think if we're being brutally honest, I think we have to be happy to finish in the points. To get even P10 in this race is gonna be rather difficult given the pace of the AI behind us. Um, it seems like this year, if I had to you know, put my finger on anything, they seem to lack pace through slow speed corners. Um, may maybe they've got a little bit less traction than previous years. We certainly have more traction out of slow speed corners, so there's a bit of a gain there. But in high speeds, it relatively seems the same. So, uh, and high speed corners is where the AI in the past have typically been, been very quick, particularly as, you know, they crank on upgrades and we get deeper into season. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be... A struggle we're all aboard the struggle bus uh in this race that's a bit of contact with norris who went in a little bit deep into uh 
Brooklyn, Luffield, uh, Brooklyn's, I think. So, that might potentially be front wing damage. I actually didn't check immediately, but we'll keep an eye on that. When we have a look at the uh, damage indicator in tire wear, I actually think we might have a little bit of damage on uh, that left hand upright, because ever since that moment with, with Norris, now we've really started to bleed time. And uh, given that there's no pit stops now to the end of the Grand Prix, everyone's on a no-stop. Boxing now at this point is not an option. We have to stay out to the end of the Grand Prix for another 10 laps with, with an already ailing car. This is going to be significantly difficult to get to the end of this race. We're now only holding down the one point. Lance Stroll and Aston Martin is very quick, as you can see in a straight line. And they're not too shabby in the corners either. He goes up the inside, heading into the old turn one. We uh, squeezed them to the inside, moved back to the racing line, took a more flowing run, and we were able to stay ahead, thankfully. But, you know, we can only get away with that for so long before the stewards start to you know, have a look at us in a, in a not-so-good light. Six laps remaining in this Grand Prix. Stroll, Sonoda. Um, that's my teammate, Liam Lawson, in the mix, P12. It might even be half a chance for, for my teammate to get points in this race if he can... Uh, muster his way past those two cars in between us but at this stage you can see how much I'm struggling I am losing so much time through high-speed corners a big slide from the Alpha Tauri drivers they go around the outside of Stroll and actually made the move stick and that's, just five laps that's absolutely nuts Sonoda is next and uh, he might actually be a potential teammate in the future I saw a lot of uh, comments supporting Sonoda's signing at Marduk Motorsport so who knows, you might have to watch this space. This could be an audition for the second driver role at this team, as uh, it, is, it is very public knowledge that there will be a vacancy after this race. Will Liam potentially... Oh no, that's contact! And Sonoda has run into the back of our left rear tire. I think maybe that was on me a little bit, moving a little bit in the braking zone. Uh, I think I'll put my hand up there on Sonoda. I didn't expect him to... Uh, be so late on the brakes around the outside and uh yeah we have given him damage unfortunately and uh that puts Snowder on on kind of a level pegging with us two cars with front wing damage uh just struggling to get around this circuit three laps to go in this race and i admittedly have got my elbows out quite hard but you've got to when you're fighting for p10 and one point the the alternative if you're not going to finish in p10 in this race then what's the point you might as well bin the car because that's essentially the same result and this is coming from the guy who pays the bills <laughs> so yeah i mean I, i've got my own license to do whatever the hell i want and we're gonna do what we can to finish in the points because every point is crucial in the constructors fight here comes liam up the inside of lance stroll into the fast s's and now it's a marduk motorsport p10 and p11 maybe just maybe Liam is going to get his first points in F1. I think I'm going to pull over to the side and let him go. It doesn't matter which Marduk Motorsport car gets points, but I think he's probably got the best chance given that he's got a clean car. So Liam is through now for P10, and we, for a change, are going to be the role of second driver. We are going to be the rear gunner and defend Liam for the rest of this race. Run away, son. Get those points, and I will do my best to keep those quick boys behind. We've got an Alpine. We've got a... Uh, an Aston Martin. Do we have any McLarens behind us? I don't think so. Either way, every team is a rival. Every team is a rival and every single point counts. So Liam doing the business at this stage. I'm surprised that he's still in my DRS range as uh, he's towing us along a little bit. I thought he would have been absolutely clear at this point. Magnussen, by the way, 25 seconds ahead of us. I don't know how we've lost that much time. I mean, yes, we've been driving badly and, de and, and defending and fighting a lot, but I didn't think 25 seconds is absolutely ridiculous. I, I just don't know how we lost that much time. But uh, eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed when we checked that... Yeah, there it is. There's the damage on the front left uh, upright. It didn't show at the time, but we did get the damage from Lando Norris, which ultimately put curtains to our chances of getting points in this race. Sergio Perez wins... The British Grand Prix from George Russell, I want to say, in P2. Hamilton uh, not too far behind the other uh, Ferraris and Red Bull. But uh, yeah, it is mud for Marduk Motorsport today, unfortunately. We just didn't have the pace this weekend. I'm glad, though, that Liam is at least going to get something out of this race. 
and promote the team forward. One point is certainly nothing to scoff at, especially when you consider where we are in the performance index. We are the sixth best car, so really, we should be challenging for fringe points at this stage. It is a pretty realistic result. But Liam Lawson, in his final race at Marduk Motorsport, gets some just desserts. He finally gets a point in F1. Well, they've done a brilliant job, I must say, under some intense pressure to take a well-earned victory here at the British Grand Prix. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everybody at the team. GG's to Red Bull, GG's to Sergio Perez. He is uh, etching himself as a potential suitor for this F1 World Championship. So, that was the race. Uh, a bit muddled from us in the end. Um, I don't think we've been this slow or uncompetitive since about the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It was uh, after Miami, wasn't it, where we just had an, an up, a massive uptake in... Uh, performance and and just relative pace to uh, the race leaders today it just it was never quite there um, even when we didn't have damage we were lacking a lot of downforce so if I had my time again to do the whole race weekend over I reckon we chuck on an extra like seven clicks of downforce front and rear to uh, to be a little bit more competitive I certainly wasn't getting the most out of uh, the corners in the middle sector uh, that's where we were losing most of our time today car was quick but um, just not in the areas that really mattered. In the end, we've been absolutely robbed, by the way, by the red flag glitch. What a shame, because Liam deserved that P10. Fought his way through the order. He, had, he got out of Q1 for the first time and was actually looking decent relative to me. And uh, yeah, just absolutely shafted out of a points finish in, in his final race. That would, have been, that would have just been the icing on the cake for... What has been not a great spell for the young driver. Really good chance for him to showcase his talent. And uh, he's got nothing to show for this stint at Marduk Motorsport. But that does not excuse the fact that he will be exiting the team at the end of today. He will be leaving. Uh, one, one good performance does not make up for a half a season of really terrible performances. So after today, Liam will be saying goodbye to Marduk Motorsport and in the next episode we will be saying hello to our new teammates hopefully much quicker a little bit more experience uh, to help with the car development and someone who's just overall got a little bit more awareness and racecraft as well someone just more well-rounded to uh to fight within the clutches of the midfield where fighting hard for points is uh, of, of utmost importance um it, it's become very evident so quickly uh that, that we need a driver to match our our team's level at this stage we can't go by with a terrible driver because the difference between a bad driver or not even like a bad driver but just like an inexperienced driver and a top level driver is massive at this point um he could be scoring big points if uh you know, things things go well. So uh, we're missing out on a lot. And I think going forward, second half of the season, we're going to have a driver who can fight up there with me. And uh, that's going to be crucial in keeping our P4 in the constructors. I'm willing to invest because the team is at that level. And when we invest, we're going to be absolutely flying for the second half of this season. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry about the waffle there. Um, <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you need to see plenty more racing game content. And, uh, yeah, I'll be back with more F123 videos very soon.